uh, there is another uh, computer simulation method uh, which is called Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, I will go to the next slide, which is called Monte Carlo simulation. So, this is another simulation technique which is uh, quite popular and this uh, simulation method is also very useful to generate the different microstructures of your system. So, I will briefly touch upon Monte Carlo simulation and here I will specifically look at the uh, Metropolis uh, Monte Carlo algorithm, Metropolis algorithm which will uh, guide us. Uh, how to generate new conformations, new microstructures uh, of a system. So, in the Metropolis algorithm, there are uh, four important steps. So, Metropolis algorithm. So, as I said that we are now trying to generate a uh, new conformation uh, of my system of interest uh, by Monte Carlo simulation uh, technique. So, uh, and under that Metropolis algorithm is a very uh, popular algorithm to generate a new conformation. So, in Metropolis algorithm uh, uh, or in Monte Carlo simulations, the new conformations um, of the system is generated by using random number generator and that is a uh, uh, big difference of Monte Carlo with molecular dynamics. In molecular dynamics simulations we generated the new conformations by solving Newton's um, equation of motion, Newton's second law. We solved equation of motion uh, to generate new conformations whereas in Met Monte Carlo simulation we will be generating uh, the new conformation of my system by <coughs> using random number generator. So, in Metropolis algorithm, as I said, there are important uh, three steps. So, in step one, what I will do, I will generate a new set of coordinates of my system randomly uh, using random number generator. So, if x new y nu and z nu are the new coordinates of ith particle, I will generate, I will obtain x nu, y nu, z nu from my old uh, conformation. So, in, uh, in uh, Metropolis algorithm, uh, we will be generating the new uh, coordinates of uh, ith particle. Uh, using random number generator. So, let us say x nu, y nu and z nu are the x y z coordinates of my ith particle and this x nu, y nu and z nu I will get as follows. So, x old is the coordinate of the ith particle and 2 zeta uh, okay i will write zeta a little better zeta minus 1 del r max where my zeta is a random number generator it's a random number not general random number likewise i'll get y new from y old and by using a random number and delta r max is the maximum displacement given to the particle. So, z nu similarly depends on z old plus 2 zeta minus delta r max. So, as you see here, uh, so x nu, y nu and z nu, we are generating using the random number zeta. So, this uh, zeta random, random number uh, 
will be between, uh, uh, so this random number you can use different function available in a computer. Uh, usually, uh, there's a library called ran, uh, random function, R-A-N-F, uh, and this random number basically generate numbers between zero and one. So with this random number generator, uh, we will randomly uh, create new set of coordinates uh, for my for my system, and that will give me a new confirmation. So that was my step one. In step two, I will calculate the potential energy of the system. Let's say my calculated uh, potential energy of the system uh, is is u nu. Okay, I, I'll use the different. Sorry. Uh, so in the new step, I'll calculate the new energy of the system, and let's say that energy is e nu. So I'll compare this e nu. Uh, so calculate e nu. So step two is calculate energy of the system and which is e nu. Uh, calculate E, which we say the e nu. In step three, I compare e nu with my energy in the previous uh, step. If E new is less than E old, where old is basically the energy of this configuration and E new is the energy of this configuration. If E new, which is a new conformation, is having lesser energy than the older configuration, then I accept this configuration or accept this microstructure. In step 4, if my E new is greater than epsilon old, I accept it with certain probability. I do not discard it completely. So, meaning, so this is meaning my energy is a fill energy is uphill. So, if energy is uphill, I accept uh, this new configuration with the following probability. So, I calculate uh, probability of the new and this is my old and I basically calculate the Boltzmann factor which is exponential. minus epsilon uh, n minus epsilon old that is what I used I suppose new and old uh, I calculate this Boltzmann factor I calculate this Boltzmann factor and if my random number, so my random number is between 0 to 1 and then I compare this Boltzmann factor e to the power minus e nu uh, minus e old divided by k b t. I compare with this. If uh, this is valid, I accept this. Why I accept if this condition is fulfilled? So, this is valid only when my epsilon nu is not too big. If epsilon nu is 
just little bigger than epsilon old, then what will happen? So, this difference is close to 0 and then this whole uh, Boltzmann factor is 1. So, this is fulfilled that because 1 is more than any number between 0 to 1. So, I accept it. If my E nu is very large than E old, then uh, this Boltzmann factor becomes close to 0 and this condition does not fulfill. So, I do not want to get a configuration which is having a much higher energy than the previous uh, configuration because I am having very high and higher energy configuration and I do not know whether that is a good configuration or not. On the other hand, if I generate a configuration which is having energy just little uh, more than my previous configuration, I tend to take that. So, that uh, so that you know uh, I, uh, I always may not go uh, in my energy profile uh, below. I might have small energy barrier and then I might go to a uh, better uh, energy state. So, I should uh, I should not just get trapped in this local minima, I should uh, take up some configuration which will allow me to cross this barrier and can get to a better uh, conformation. So, this is my uh, uh, free energy profile uh, with reaction coordinate. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the uh, Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, here, one thing uh, I need to stress is that when I when I'm generating the new conformation, I am trusting or I am using only the preceding step. I am generating new configuration only based on my preceding configuration. I do not care what was the configuration before x old and that is where uh, Monte Carlo and molecular dynamics uh, differ. So, if I compare molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo in so first difference the, the most important difference is in MD we solve Newton's uh, we basically look at Newton's uh, equation of motion and so we solve Newton's second law by solving equation of motion. Whereas in Monte Carlo, we generate the new configuration by random number. So we use the random number generator to generate uh, the configuration randomly. And the second difference between MD and uh, MC is that here there is a time information there is a time information because we are solving uh, uh, force is equal to mass into acceleration and the acceleration is having the time uh, information and therefore there is a time information present in MD. Whereas in Monte Carlo simulation, we our new configuration is depending only on the preceding step and it, it does not have any memory what, uh, the, uh, what was the configuration before the preceding step and that is called the Markov, Markov chain model. Uh, so, in Monte Carlo, there is no history, there is no history and that is the, it follows the Markov chain model. Nevertheless, uh, both the MD and MC simulation techniques help you uh, which I am emphasizing again is that these techniques basically help you to generate your uh, ensemble. It basically helps you to get all possible microstates of your system so that you can uh, generate, you can uh, calculate the thermodynamic properties 
in the accurate level uh, which matches the experimental data. So, both MD and MC are generating lot many microstates and when you put up this uh, information of the microstates, you see the time evolution when you are talking about MD, there is no time evolution uh, from MC, but ultimately when you take the average over this ensemble, you get the property which you can compare with experimentally uh, major property which are the macrostates.